The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem, New Hampshire. It's the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast, where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other topics that you'd normally talk around the pit. As always, I'm joined by Grizzly Adams. Good going Lord, on? look at that beard. That was perfect up until we started. What do you mean? What happened? What's going on? Huh? Uh, it fell off uh, <laughs> the, the holder. Hold on. There we go. There you should be go. a hand oh, model. Man. Screw it. What's going on? Nothing. What's going on? How are you doing? Nothing much. Good. How was your Easter? Nice and quiet. Well, that's good. Yeah, a lot of Easter's were nice and quiet, I think. Nice and quiet. It was nice out, so we got out, got outside, hung out with my neighbors for a while. Yep. Threw uh threw nice. a ham on the on the kettle. Yeah. Now was that a spiral ham? No. Just um I want to say it was the butt portion actually. Okay. I think it said. Yeah, yeah nice ten pound ham. And you used uh what, Malcolm's? It was it was nice. from Malcolm's site, how to barbecue right, but it was Captain Rodney's it was a boucan sauce, which is a Basically, uh, like a Caribbean-based sauce slash glaze. So it has those Caribbean spices, get a little bit yep. of heat with the sweetness. And this one was uh, uh, peach. And man, oh, nice. did it go well. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> I yeah, saw, I like the picture. So you did a nice ham yourself. Yeah. With the pineapples and... Yeah. Oh my God! Hold on. How do I? You there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I try and keep it, um, you know, keep it simple. Um, I did, uh, you know, the, the spiral ham. Threw it on. Um, just covered it in brown sugar. Um, you know, a, a little fruit spritz. Um, and then just you know threw the pineapples and stuck it on it and finished it but not you know nothing crazy just quick and i was doing some other stuff for the wife around the house so that's all nice nice yep. nice just getting but the we, chat rolling up here i'm a little behind okay. here for a quick second no problem big day today huge day today nice show nice show great, going on right now great show so let's get into it Ladies and gentlemen, good friend of ours returning f to the show for his second appearance on the release date of his first cookbook, which is outstanding. I've been drooling over this for at least the past two to three months, you know, being under a slightly gag order because I can't talk about the recipes, <laughs> but I could show some pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, from Barbecue Buddha, our good friend, Ray Sheehan. Hey, guys. How are What's you? Up, Ray? Good, how are thank you? you for having me. No, oh, thank thank you for giving us the opportunity of having today the release date to come on. I, uh, you know, I couldn't think of a, a better bunch of guys to spend it with. I really appreciate it having me on here. Thank you so much. Oh, it's our pleasure, thank our you. pleasure. So you you seem a little giddy today. I'm like <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm really happy. Uh, my excitement was a little bit uh, tempered, you know, with everything going on and. Uh, I know everybody's going through something right now. Um, so, I, you know, at first I wasn't sure if they were going to proceed with it, but I'm, I'm really glad they did because a lot of people had pre-ordered the book and it kind of gives them something to look forward to, um, including myself, because this was uh, something that we've been working on for the past year. And to see it come to fruition now is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like tears of joy, man. It's, uh, this is uh, something that I've always dreamed about doing, and uh, I can share uh, my love and my passion um, and techniques uh, for cooking and barbecue with everyone. It really makes me happy, you know. 
Nice. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 this book, when, when you got me, sent, sent uh, both of us a copy a couple months back. And, oh, man, I've been just going through it and going through it. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah, you, uh, you, you, you can tell you definitely put your heart and soul into this book for sure. You know, the pictures are incredible. The, the recipes are, you know, precise to the point, not, you know, overwhelming or confusing. You know, it's, well, it's I, uh, I feel like with some, some uh, cookbooks and, and some blogs, you get so much backstory that it, it kind of, you know, it slows you down from getting to the recipe. And I wanted to, you know, give a little bit, uh, but I wanted to get, like you said, to the, straightforward to to the recipes and uh the quickest way to the best flavor possible you know yep uh, nice now johnny uh, um so ray when you when you um you put up a post today um you know thanking uh, a bunch of people bob trudnack billy gillespie um some other people um you know what what did they have um, how were they involved in, in this, in this book? I know some, you know, four words, um, you know, right. how were they involved in this cookbook? So the one thing that I learned about doing a, a cookbook is that it takes a village and it's, it's a process of refinement. So, you know, I came up with this idea and I was fortunate enough that, uh, Bill Gillespie introduced me to his publisher, um, you know, and, I got to pitch them my idea and, and we came up with this book because I was winning these awards for barbecue sauce. Um, so it was kind of like, you know, you're the, you're winning all these awards for barbecue sauce. You're the sauce guy. And yep. so all the recipes in the book have won some kind of, you know, a sauce or cooking award basically. So they all bring some flavor to the table in that, in that regard, as far as like everyone else, like Bob Trudnack, I was honored that he wrote the forward to the book. Um, the first barbecue class I took was Bob's at his home mm -hmm. in Lansdale, Pennsylvania. And uh, it opened my eyes to a whole world of, you know, competition barbecue and a barbecue as a, not only a cuisine, but a sport, you know? And um, so that was a huge uh, thing for me. So it was an honor for him to be able to, to, see me go from zero to 60. And, you know, I had like zero knowledge to, I mean, I wouldn't say zero. I, I've always been interested in barbecuing, but not like to this level. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was great that he, he kind of saw my progress along the way in, you know, seeing me at competitions and barbecue guru carries my uh, barbecue Buddha brand of sauces in their, their uh, online store. Uh, so uh, they've been very supportive. Um, so to have that uh, that forward and that gives you some background uh, is is really helpful to I think the reader. Um, that was back in like 2014. By 2015, I was like, you know what, I'm I'm gonna take my sauces that I've been creating and turn it into a company. So I started Barbecue Buddha in 2015. We're coming up on five years now. So in five years, we've gone from you know, just scratching the surface to, you know, uh, you know, teaching others about it. I teach, uh, besides catering and doing the barbecue Buddha brand of sauces. Um, I do teach some outdoor cooking classes as well. Um, now getting back to the book, Ken Goodman did the photographs for the book. He's an amazing, amazing human and an even better photographer. <laughs> if I could say it like that, he's a chef for 20 years and he's, and he's a, you know, a, a world-class barbecue guy as well. So having him do the photographs, he knew this is what, you know, this should look like. And, um, you know, he saw my vision through, it's all real food that we cooked for the book. There's no fake stuff. There's no painted anything. It's all real. You know, we had to time it. My, my buddy, Tim came over, uh, Tim Citrone. He came, he brought his smoker uh, we had my cooker going, we had the Weber kettle going and we cooked all this stuff and then we had to time it. So Ken could photograph everything kind of in order each day. So it was like four days we're doing, you know, we had 60 recipes. So in four days we had to do so many. And then he came back to finish shooting up the, sh the, 
the sauces. But it's all real photographs. It's all real food. Oh, yeah. You know? And that and that's tough because once I mean once barbecue basically hits you know hits the air it oxidizes yeah. immediately. Oh yeah, it's that's you know the tough so you're not going to get the yeah. It is wow. if you know you do catering so you you know holding barbecue is a very difficult thing. So mm -hmm. it really pops and looks fresh and you know and we did it in natural daylight. And so we did it all outside in uh, in my backyard. Um, you know, we set up, I have a covered deck and we had a, a tent set up, a couple tents set up as well, uh, to set up our, our station. But I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a blast. I have to say it was so much fun, you know, uh, but it was a process of refinement because he would take a picture and start to build that picture. So we'd have one thing there, one thing here, a protein, a sauce, move it around and it was it was the process of getting it right where um, he or I or you know both of us thought it should be. And the guy's a genius. I mean, he he nailed it like just about every time on the first couple of shots. It was, I mean, he made it easy. You know, it was really uh, a pleasure to work with. That's awesome. Were there any beers consumed during the whole process? Uh, yeah, yeah, there was right. a few beers. Yeah. Uh, I tried to keep it local with some IPAs from some uh, breweries down this way. Uh, nice. So, and I did include one in the book uh, from Asbury Park Brewery um, in the beer can chicken. So, you know, and I had to throw in a little Southern uh, cheer wine in there too to give uh, some Southern flavor in the uh, in the book. But uh, but you know, it was nice. Even the props that we used, like some of the uh, some of the vessels for the sauces and the platters for the food, I was able to get at uh, there's a uh, New Egypt, uh, a flea market down here in New Egypt where I live. And I was able to get flea market finds to like do some kind of one of a kind uh, shot. So that was pretty neat too, to have that local flavor. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Ray, I'm telling you, I gained 15 pounds just looking at the pictures. <laughs> they, they, they were, they're, they're fantastic. And the pictures we're speaking of is right here in released today at a bookstore near you, also Amazon and a couple other online retailers award-winning barbecue sauce and how you use them in my opinion 176 pages of barbecue goodness the and also the best sauce in the world memphis mop and the the secret ingredients to next level smoking and I will say though, Memphis Mop. When I when I first tried the Memphis Mop, and when I compared it to the Kansas City, the Kansas City like was amazing, amazing. But then as I put the Memphis Mop on on different things, it it basically kind of passed the Kansas City and just the flavor profiles. You know, kind of. I mean, it was it was nothing like you know the Kansas. It was it was amazing. You know, I thought it, I liked the bold flavors, but the Memphis mop was, oh, I feel like it doesn't matter what you put it on. The Memphis really lingers on your palate and you can kind of taste those, those flavors uh, a little bit longer. And it kind of like, I even say this in the book, it like leaves you wanting more. I don't know what it is. It's, yep. it's those spices, you know, I feel like my Kansas city, and this is, this is my version of Kansas city barbecue sauce. Uh, I wouldn't say that it is the version. It's done very well in competition uh, at the American Royal Best Sauce on the Planet. We we got like a, a 11th place call, um, you know, which is really in the American Royal. That's a great finish, you know. Um, but the Memphis, it doesn't have that sweet finish. It has more of a, a tangy finish. Yep. And it just kind of like lingers on your palate. And the best thing about um, these products I feel like is that they're all natural. Like there's no artificial colors. Yep. There's no, fla you know, flavors. Pres there's no preservatives. Um, and finishing up in these contests and doing so well, um, I feel like that's a testament to the natural ingredients that are inside every bottle, you know? Well, that's huge. Cause it's, you know, it goes, goes a longer way. You know, if you're doing competitions, one bite, yeah, you can fill, right. you know, you can fill as much flavor in something, you know, and 
it's not gluten free. It's got MSG in it. But if you're doing stuff on a regular day and like you said, catering and teaching classes and stuff, I'd want to go the, the natural route. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, it's not, um, they're not loaded with sodium. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's there. I do use these in competition and we do very well. I do, you know, layer the flavors for competition, but uh, just for like everyday cooking, like you said, for catering, for teaching classes, for backyard barbecue, you can eat a plate of it. You can have your ribs with sauce. So if you like sauce on your ribs or your barbecue, you can do it without feeling uh, bloated afterwards, you know, you, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you're getting a lot of good flavor and they are all gluten free. So I know there's people that are, you know, really trying to watch the, uh, the gluten and, uh, and all the products, the rubs and the sauces are gluten free. Now, Ray, what, what, what was the event that the Memphis mop won the world's best barbecue sauce? Uh, that would have been the world hot sauce awards. Uh, in the barbecue uh, sauce, in the barbecue sauce division, uh, we won first place uh, vinegar. We won first place Memphis, and uh, we won first place uh, div barbecue sauce divisional champion uh, over across fourteen categories of barbecue sauce out of twelve different countries. Nice. I'd say that's pretty damn good. Damn good. Damn. <laughs> I mean, good. you know, it's it's humbling. It's. Uh, and, and and just a few weeks ago, uh, the Memphis, and this is the one that really wins all the awards for us. Um, all the products have won some kind of an award, uh, but the Memphis Mop Man, first place at the NBBQA Awards of Excellence in the Vinegar Mild category for the second time in four years. I'm like floored. I'm like I'm so honored, and I'm, I'm I can't even believe it. You know, I'm grateful that it was uh, you know voted. Uh, to be number one, I happen to think it's delicious, but I'm a little biased, you know, because <laughs> we're, you know, we're making it. But uh, but you're you're also, I mean, in that in those awards, you're also going against. I mean, you're going against Stubbs, you're going against, you know, Sweet Baby Rays, you're going against, you know, oh, yeah. all these big brand name companies, yeah. and you beat them all up. And it and then you know? me, you know, it's like okay, yep, exactly. You know, it, that's why I said it's it's very humbling. Um, I remember. Uh, Four years ago when we won the first time at the NBBQA and you uh, texted me and you're like, congratulations. And I'm like, for what? Like we won. <laughs> you know? And you're like, dude, I'm here. And you guys won first place for the Memphis mop. I could have taken your award home. You could have. Yes. I could have helped you out. <laughs> it, you know, but you know what? It never gets old because taste is so subjective. Yep. I mean, you're talking for the last five years, this sauce has won well over a dozen awards just on its own is one sauce. And I mean, that's, that's good flavor. I mean, that's consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that to me, I'm like, wow, man, I made that. Like, I can't even, you know, it's like, um, I, it, it's hard to put into words, but I, I am extremely grateful that people like it. Oh, yeah. you know, Especially with all the new like flavor profiles coming out, people right. are putting, you know, all this crazy stuff in sauces nowadays. I mean, the thing that I liked about um, your secret ingredient stuff, um, you know, when you, in the beginning you, you throw in like, you know, what, what builds a sauce. Um, right. But I love the vanilla extract. That, you know, everybody, you have to have something that makes it your own. Yep. So there's different things that I like to play around with. One of them is vanilla extract because I have a lot of different sauces in the works and I'm hoping in the next year or two to really come out with a few more. Uh, flavors. But, you know, uh, in the book, I do feature black garlic. I love, love, love black yeah, garlic sorry, market yeah. in uh, Pensacola, Florida. <clears throat> Produce a consistent, delicious black garlic that I use in my Asian barbecue sauce. And that's, you know, it makes it, it, it gives it a, a whole nother layer of flavor. So you have to make it your own, whether it's beef drippings, vanilla, uh, you know, black garlic, make, make the sauce your own. Yep. Now, so if it was beef drippings and you're doing, and you're getting this co-packaged, how do you go about, you know, doing that, you know, sending that stuff to the co-packer? I mean, how do they, can they buy it, you know, locally sourced? These, you know, a lot of the co-packers, they are able to get, and I don't have that in any of my products yet, 
but yep. they are able to get a ton of different things that I would have never even thought of. All different, you know, balsamic powder and Worcestershire powder, and they can get unique ingredients in bulk. The issue with co-packing it becomes how much of it do they use? Do they use it for other people? And if they're only using it for you, then you have to buy the barrel of it and you own it. Yep. So you're going to use it up eventually. And and every co-packer is different. They all have their own their own uh, rules that they go by, their own guidelines. Mm -hmm. nice. But if you have a co-packer, some of the things are a little bit more difficult. Like if I wanted to do a black garlic, probably I would be sending them. Like I've, I, you know, some of the co-packers want you to send them certain ingredients. So most of them provide all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on who you're dealing with. And price point and stuff like that. And price point and what makes sense. Um, you know, like I use a specific Worcestershire because I didn't want caramel color in any of my products. So it cost me a little bit more, mm -hmm. but it was worth it because then I'm not, I don't want someone who's allergic to dyes and, and, uh, you know, uh, and different, uh, colors to be getting, uh, sick from having my products, you know, hundred percent. some people are very sensitive in their diets. To, so I'd rather just be more transparent, you know? Yep. <laughs> All right, the uh, the boys in the chat, they're getting antsy here. We already have a couple questions on Alabama white sauce and a uh, couple others. So let's, uh, let's hit the break. <clears throat> when we come back, we'll have the first giveaway for the book, and then we'll dive right into it. So I hope you guys paid attention to that segment because both answers were right in there. So uh, give us a minute, and we'll be right back. Attention cigar smokers, or even friends of a cigar smoker, if you're looking to relax with a nice premium cigar or looking for a great gift for a cigar smoker, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Our friends at TwoGuysCigars.com have created the Cigar of the Month Club. For just $24.99 per month, you or your friend will receive four different premium handmade cigars every month, and shipping and handling is included. Go to TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and go to the Cigar of the Month Club. You can stop anytime because there's no contract, but you won't because this is a tremendous deal for our listeners. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and click the Cigar of the Month Club. At the same time, if you want to learn about the cigars you receive each month, you can smoke along with them on their own podcast called The Cigar Authority. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a nice premium cigar from our friends at twoguyscigars.com. And we are back. All right, boys, this is how we're going to do this. Everyone in the chat room, stop chatting. Hold on, Johnny, can we win? We already won, my friend. Okay, I'm just asking. If <laughs> we won. We won three months ago, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it, it's been killing me to not talk about these recipes, Ray. But you know, I played nice. We had rules. You know, you asked me, don't talk about the recipes. Can I show pictures? Yeah, you can show pictures. Okay, got a little bit of taste in there. All right, so here we go, guys. We're gonna freeze the chat right now. I am going to. Screenshot my phone. So the last um, last message we have in there is from Chef Johnny Stewart of Hey There Lep. So I'm going to screenshot that for proof if anyone needs it. So here is the question: What for to win the copy of the award-winning barbecue sauces and how to use them? What year did Barbecue Buddha start? And go. Uh, I know uh, Bueller. I know Mike and Ray can't win. <laughs> Can Dave and I win? Yeah, so. <laughs> Ray, so going through your book, um, I'm not a pork chop guy at all. Um, I, you know. To me, they really just lack flavor no matter what you do to them. Um, 
But this beer brine pork chop with the Memphis glaze looks amazing. I mean, I, I've read through the ingredients. I've looked at, you know, the brine. Um, I haven't tried it yet. But just looking at the picture, like, this makes me want to go buy a bone-in pork chop and go try it. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, see, that's the thing. It's So we're talking about award-winning barbecue sauces, right? And as part of this book, you get my number one awarded sauce, the Memphis Mop Barbecue Sauce Recipe. But it's not just a sauce book. There's a, so much diff, so much uh, barbecue technique. There's a lot of great marinades, rubs, brines. There's so many different ways to infuse flavor and moisture into your recipes in this book. Um, and on top of that, there's a lot of great sauce recipes. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to get that out there that uh, – even though we're saying, you know, award-winning barbecue sauces, we're really teaching you how to use them too. Um, especially with these brines, when you talk about like this beer brine, that's going to give you, if, especially doing it like overnight, you're going to get like a, a really, um, really flavorful piece of meat that's going to maintain its moisture. And uh, I mean, you could see with the, with the glaze, it just it really pops, you know? Yep. Um, and even, and then you talk about that, uh, the Cubano uh, pork tenderloin. I brine that in a mojo marinade before I even stuff it and grill it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can add flavor to uh, your barbecue and your grilling uh, in, in this book. And this really teaches you how to build the flavors and, you know, the flavor right. stack. Yep. Right. So it's not just here, slap a sauce on it and it's going to taste great. I want to build your dish from the, you know, from uh, the, the ground up. I want the foundation to have flavor and then the filling to have flavor and the, the, the glaze to have flavor and, and build it into one cohesive uh, plate, you know? Nice. And Johnny, we got a winner. We have a winner. We have a winner. It is Dave Neese with the correct answer of 2015. All right. I think he cheated. He paid attention is what he did. He did. He did. <laughs> All right. So while we're on the roll, he let's. He pays attention to detail. Let's, let's, let's do the sauces, and then we yep. need to dive into the chapters, of, dive into some of these recipes. 100%. All right. For the sauces, the award-winning world's best Memphis mop and the Kansas City, what event was... Memphis Mop named best barbecue sauce in the world. Go ahead, boys. Hit the hit the chat. I will pay attention. Let's get into Jesus. That was quick. <laughs> Daddy Dutch, Kent Vanderweerd, World Hot Sauce Awards. Congratulations, Dutch. You are going to enjoy these, my friend. The uh, delicious, and I know you'll come up with something good to put them on. But, boys, let's get into this book. I have been dying since breakfast to talk about these recipes. See, I got a little emotional right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, chapter one, we have the best barbecue sauce in the world, which is the Memphis Mop. And the recipe I picked was the beer brined pork chops with the Memphis glaze. This picture is just glistening. <laughs> <laughs> Words can't describe it. So, Ray, elaborate on this recipe. We already discussed it while you were picking a winner. Yeah, well, someone's got to do it. <laughs> yeah, as ahead, I was Ray. saying, there's a lot of great uh, brines and... Uh, and rubs in the book, aside from the award-winning sauces. And in that recipe, we, we did brine it. Uh, it's a beer brine. And there's, I mean, you can use different brines if you like. Uh, apple juice would go well, you know, and, and like an apple juice brine. But the beer brine really, really makes it stand out, really gives it kind of a little bit of a caramel flavor to it and pairs really well with the, with the tanginess of the Memphis. Nice. <laughs> Did we go over meatloaf yet? Nope. Yeah. Okay, good. The meatloaf looks a freaking fantastic. My, the meatloaf. 
So chapter two, we have the sweet and tangy North Carolina barbecue sauce and the cheesy smoked barbecue meatloaf. Now, I've been doing meatloafs a lot lately. Obviously, I've, I've had a little bit of inspiration to do them because of this book. <laughs> um, what do you say, Ray? Uh, these are super easy and really comforting. This is a great quarantine recipe because you can pretty much get everything, you know, chopped meat, cheddar cheese. You could kind of make it your own if you like, you know, with try different cheeses like a like a Gouda or, uh, you know, something like that uh, or a cheese blend. Uh, super easy. And that that North Carolina sauce really makes it pop. It's like it's like uh, it's really tangy. Yeah. It's almost like a little creamy on the front of your palate, and then the finish is very tangy. Goes w- really well with the meat. Now, is 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 the tang like a like a like a strong vinegar, or is it pulled back a little bit? Um, it's like a twang. Yeah, yeah, it's more like a twang. It's like okay. a, it's not quite a punch out, but it's a, uh, you know, it's there. It's like it, it really, it's it's a nice finish. Oh, that's great! Yeah, the, the, the I, I'm still blown away by the pictures. It, 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 they are absolutely amazing. And then we get to the honey barbecue sauce, and this hands down in the in the chapter is the winner: the loaded barbecue sweet potato oh, with yeah. pulled pork and smoked candied pecans. So I I first had that 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 loaded uh sweet potato um at hubba hubba smokehouse in north carolina and we i ordered it thinking it was like a side dish and it was this massive like you know <laughs> three pound uh sweet potato loaded with pork and all the fixings and i'm like this is amazing so coming up i, I knew like this honey barbecue sauce would be great on it but i wanted to make it my own so i put uh you know, I layered it with, with the, um, with the, I made like the candied pecans and smoked them to really finish it off to kind of like, you know, add my own little signature thing to it. But the pecans, they go terrific with it. I mean, it's like outrageous with that honey, you know, you get like a sweet, salty, savory, uh, butteriness from the, uh, from the sauce and the pecans with the creamy, uh, meat from the potato. It's just, that's like really, that's a meal right there, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. It, oh, I'm drooling just looking at the picture. <laughs> but Ben's over here wiping his chin. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, we, you know, you discussed it earlier, the Cubano stuffed pork tenderloin. You know, I like how you, you show the steps, you know, of, of um, how to, you know, um, butterfly the pork, um, right. you know, lay everything in it, and then, you know, how to roll it up and, and throw it in the, the grill. You know, you're not just telling, you know, okay, this is what you do. You actually show steps. Um, every picture looks amazing. You know, um, anybody, anybody can do this. Oh yeah. And, and that's the thing is, so we create this book and I want people to actually use it. Like mm-hmm. one of my favorite features of this book, you have it in your hand. So let it lay flat. Let it open it up and let it lay flat. It's got that lay flat binding. Yep. So if you're cooking with it, it's not closing up constantly, you know. So that's one feature uh, to the book that I really love. Uh, Page Street uh, does that for a lot of their books. And that was something that I was, like, really excited to have. So when you're cooking this and you're trying to wrap a pork tenderloin, your book is not closing when you're trying to wrap it with this, <laughs> with, with the, uh, you know, with the string. So... But yeah, showing the steps, uh, you know, and making it accessible to people, uh, showing them uh, how they can add a flavor. And it's really not that difficult. It just have to take a little time. You know, it's like anything else. Mm-hmm. So you're and you're saying this book is made to get dirty. Yes. Perfect. Definitely. <laughs> is. It's, it's made to, to have out there, you know, when you're cooking by the pit, you know, it's perfect. Yeah, around every everything's got a nice finish on it, so it'll wipe off nicely. Might leave a couple stains, but that adds character for sure. Oh yeah. Then we where, where were we? Chapter three. Yes. So chapter four, we have the sweet and smoky Kansas City barbecue sauce, 
And for all our California friends out there, the smoked Philly-style tri-tip sandwich with provolone, peppers, and barbecue onions. Oh, that's well, I had to give a shout-out to all my Philly friends, you know. <laughs> and uh, one of the guys that helped me out with this, um, I sponsor his barbecue team. His name is Tim Citrone. He's a great barbecue guy. He's a good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, he... He, you know, he helped me cook for this, um, for the photo shoot. And so he, he actually did this. He put that Philly tri tip together, but you know, he knows a thing or two about a thing or two about Philly cheesesteak. So I have to give credit to him for that one. You know, he really, he did a nice job with that. Off, off the topic. Um, did he, did he do the last, um, Brookline, New Hampshire, um, event with, uh, like, um, Boo Q did it, but was, was he, because he was the only guy that actually came from Philadelphia. Uh, no, he's actually from West Deptford, New Jersey. Okay, 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 okay. But I was very fortunate to have uh, him and my friend Glenn come over and, and give me a hand with the uh, with the with the food. And uh, you don't realize how much food it is. You know, you're talking about sixty recipes, and then there's sub recipes like in the uh, pig out cone. There's a five cheese bacon mac, mac and cheese, right? So, and then you need a pork shoulder to do that recipe. So there's all these sub recipes that go into it. It's really more than 60 recipes. And I enlisted my son to uh, help us out with, uh, you know, washing dishes, cleaning up, uh, everybody. It was like all hands on deck really to, to get this done. But what did you, what what did you do with the, um, the food? Did you, I mean, we you kept some of it. We donated yeah. some of it. Um, I sent it home with people. You know, it was like, and then some of it we kept around just to use for pictures later. You know, like one of the things like the meatloaf for the ham or, you know, you can kind of slip it in or slice peaches. Like you'd be surprised where it shows up, you know. So some of this stuff we kind of hung on to a little bit too. Okay. Yeah, because I don't eat like, I don't eat barbecue really, you know, so what? like that's, yeah, I mean, I, I cook it, you know, and you know, you're smelling it all day, you know, you see what goes, you know, um, I just don't eat it, you know, so it's like, oh, people, you know, how come you don't do this? How come you don't do that? Because what am I going to do with it after I cook it? Right. You or know? it's a, such a big quantity. Um, yep. Like, so one of the things like we did, like, so I made this, uh, I happen to have like this Wagyu brisket. And so the brisket in the book is uh, a wagyu because I had it for a competition, and then we didn't end up doing the competition. And so I'm like, I'm like, I really want to eat this. Like, this is like amazing. And uh, and then I had to save it because we're doing one of the recipes is like a brisket baked beans. So I need to put brisket in there, you know. And so that was one of those uh, instances where we need it for another recipe besides the main pictures, you know. Because mm-hmm. we're doing, we need it for the burnt ends. We need it for the for the Texas style brisket, and then we need it for the baked beans. And speaking of the Texas style brisket, that brings us to the bold Texas sauce and the barbecue beef tacos. The barbecue beef tacos. It's another one. It's it's a classic smoke, basically a classic smoked chuck. Uh, you know, and and it's just pulled. And I'm using it for tacos, but it's the rub. It's, you know, so in that recipe, you're getting, you know, a, a rub. You're getting the technique, how to smoke it, and then the sauce to finish it. And uh, makes for really easy, really delicious uh, smoked tacos. Yeah, they, they look they look absolutely fantastic. It's- and that recipe was just featured in the uh, in the Barbecue News magazine this, this month uh, in the April issue. Uh, the uh, the uh, tacos, the barbecue beef tacos, but the one with the the covers, the the whole hog eaten. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thanks to uh, Cal and Janet Phelps at Barbecue News Magazine. Um, I, if if you know, if you've been following me, I've been contributing to their magazine for the last three years. This April marks three years that I've been contributing, uh, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity that they've given me to contribute to their award-winning magazine. And I can't believe it's so fitting that like 
I'm excited that, so they're featuring my cookbook in the three year anniversary. Right. But you know, three years ago, I would have never guessed that, you know, you never know where you're going to end up and barbecue, uh, you know, there's a place for everyone to fit into barbecue, you know, whether you're a, a cook, a chef, a backyard person into competitions. And that's what I love about it. The camaraderie, the sense of community. Uh, it's really, uh, it, like I said, it's a place for everyone to belong. Oh, hundred percent. And Kel, Kel is a great guy, you know, great family. Um, oh yeah. You know, I can't Definitely. say good enough things. So, and hopefully we're, you should come to, I uh, should check out, uh, the first Saturday in August, um, um, at big Dan's, um, he does the SEA event. I think Kel's going to, um, Kel and Joanne are going to, um, join, uh, come up. So, or come down, whatever. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you should check it out. Cool. Oh, but Johnny. Yes. So remember we did an event. Um, and we were doing pig shots. Yes. Have you seen this page? Can of you the pig shots? Can you? That's a great segue. Uh, Hang on! Don't jump the gun here. It's like drool is just coming out of my mouth. <laughs> in chapter six, we have the South Carolina mustard sauce with, and the recipe I had picked was the Cubano stuffed pork tenderloin, which we had always gone over. Which I, which I think is looks is the most amazing recipe in the entire book. Yeah, it's one of my favorites, definitely. I mean, the, it's it's a good, you know, that one's a good entertaining recipe because you could make you could make these pork loins ahead of time and then you know stuff them and roll them and everything and then just sear them off uh, and finish them, you know, right before your guests arrive and then yep. slice them and plate them. It's nice and easy. <clears throat> yep. Then chapter seven is the tangy peach barbecue sauce. And the recipe is the pig shots, for sure. <laughs> and it was just, now how did you, I'm looking here, you used andouille sausage, thick cut bacon, cream cheese, in the, in the house rub. And, and, and also, you, if you notice, in, folks, when you get the book, you'll notice it says the house rub, you know, and he refers to a page. So he has the recipe also in there for that house rub so you can, uh, you know, make it on your own. Yep. And everything's so simple. That's what's nice about this. It's, it's so simple. You probably have a lot of this in your, in your pantry, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yep. and, and you can use whatever sausage you like. If you like andouille, if you like kielbasa, what, you know, uh, something hotter, something sweeter, it's really make it your own, but the recipes are designed to get people cooking to like, Hey, look what I can do with a few simple ingredients. Um, and this great sauce, you know? Yep. And then the next chapter, excuse me, chapter eight, you, you got me on the sauce for sure. The, the cherry bourbon barbecue sauce. We, how, how did you come up with that? I was making a cherry barbecue sauce and I'm using whole cherries and I'm like doing, you know, trying all these different things. And the thing that I realized was what I said at the beginning of the show is like, I, my goal is to get to the best flavor in the quickest way possible. So I started just using cherry juice and I started getting a more consistent sauce because cherries, you know, more tart, less tart, more, you need to add more sugar or less so, the, but the, the tart cherry juice made it real simple, and the the bourbon really complements it well with the notes of smoke and caramel. It really goes really well with the tartness of the cherries. I mean, if like I'm a bourbon fan, I'm not a huge drinker, but I love bourbon, and uh, and I really wanted to get it into a sauce and get it on my barbecue. Nice, yes. In the in the recipe I picked was the crab stuffed bacon wrapped shrimp. Well, so the picture that we ended up going with doesn't even have the sauce on it because uh, the shrimp looks so 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 uh, raw and rustic and yeah and uh, you know really you know good and crispy on the grill. Um, we had the picture that we were going to use was much saucier, but you really didn't get a good look at the shrimp with the crab in it. So 
that's why we went with that picture. But it really, I think it came out good, the picture. The shot's good, you know. Yep, mm-hmm. for sure. And uh, we're going we're gonna to crank through next two because uh, apparently we're running out of time here, boys. <laughs> um, we have the, the Asian barbecue sauce, which, you know, I love that, you know, that gingery, um, gingery taste. And you did the uh, smoked pork belly bites. So everybody's doing, you know, pork belly burnt ends. These are not in the style of burnt ends. They're literally smoked, uh, you know, seasoned, smoked, and uh, glazed pork belly. Uh, get to the flavor as quick as possible that way. It's a, it's a great tailgate recipe. It's nice and easy once you have the sauce made. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. And then to finish off this wonderful book, we have – the contra- somewhat controversial Alabama white sauce. Some people like it. Some people don't. I personally am a big fan of it. And you used it in more, main, more of a side dish sauce of uh, a creamy white barbecue slaw and also a pasta salad. Yeah, the classic way would be to have it, you know, uh, Big, big Bob Gibson style with some smoked chicken, which we do have that in the book as well. Uh, we do have like that classic recipe. Uh, but I like to use it for a lot of things. I, I feel like mayonnaise is a love or hate thing for a lot of people. I happen to love it. Um, and the book does feature some nice side dishes as well uh, to get people cooking. Uh, and to be able to infuse these barbecue sauces into your everyday meal. So if you go through the trouble of making 10 different barbecue sauces. I want to give you plenty of ways to use it up. You know, I don't want anything going to waste. So whether it's a chicken salad or a, uh, a pasta salad and with the mustard sauce, we did a, a really nice steakhouse uh, spinach and uh, warm bacon, mustard vinaigrette salad. Like, so there's a lot of different ways you can use it. And, and uh, it, of course it complements smoked or grilled meats but also vegetables and uh, side dishes as well. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. <clears throat> but Ray, yeah, this, this, this book is outstanding. You know, th- thank you for uh, getting us a couple of advanced copies to check this out. Um, this conversation was definitely worth the wait. And you know, I, f- I feel relieved. I could t- talk about the recipes <laughs> finally. Please do, yes. Oh, <laughs> Thank for you. sure. Um, you guys are great, and, and I really appreciate you uh, having me on and, and talking it up and, and uh, you know, taking the time. I know you're a little over time, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Um, no problem. Where, where can everyone find the books now? So the book is available anywhere books are sold. Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, Book Depository, uh, IndieBound. You can get it on my website. It's BBQ. Buddha, B-U-D-D-H-A dot com. Um, but basically anywhere books are sold. Um, and again, to get my sauces, uh, bbqbuddha.com. Awesome, awesome. And, now, um, go ahead. Uh, quick question, Ray. How sure. come you don't have barbecue Buddha on this cookbook on the front at all? Um, it's not a barbecue Buddha cookbook. Uh, okay. I'm really trying to distinguish myself as Ray Sheehan, the creator of Barbecue Buddha sauces okay. and seasonings. Uh, there is a food blogger who is the Barbecue Buddha in Kentucky, and I really don't want to confuse what I'm doing with what he's doing. Um, he's a blogger, and he has, uh, you know, he's like a rep with Big Green Egg, and uh, I think we kind of started around the same time. And he doesn't have a sauce, and 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 um, so basically. Because my original idea was something along those lines, and um, I feel like this is much better. I can really make my own identity. Um, you know, I've, I've created the sauces like we were discussing five years ago, and I, I've i never really referred to myself as the Barbecue Buddha. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just the guy that created Barbecue Buddha sauces and seasonings, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll let it stand on its own, on, on its own merits. Awesome. Well, it gives you more avenues too, so that's good. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yep. Well, Ray, 
best of luck with the book sales. Thank, Thank you, you for your much, generosity man. in the two giveaways today. Very much appreciated. And best of luck, brother. Like always, open door here. You know, whenever you want, give, give us a shout and right on. We'll, we'll book the date. Well, awesome. that's it for this week, folks. We'd like to thank you all for joining us. Catch the audio wherever podcasts are found. Catch the video on Facebook and YouTube. On YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And right, right there, you'll be notified every time we upload the latest episode. And you have our entire catalog right there at your fingertips. On social media, find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram at Pit Life BBQ. Questions and comments, send them to Pit Life BBQ Podcast at gmail.com. And like always, folks, please subscribe, like, rate, and review. Hit that share button. You guys are amazing. Uh, We can't thank you enough. But, Ray, thank you again for taking some time to join us. Best of luck with the book. I know it's going to be a winner. Folks, I stand by this book. I know Mike stands by this book. So hit it online or whenever this is over and you can get to the local bookstore. Uh, go and grab it. You will not be disappointed. And nope. until next week, keep the smoke rolling. The views by and far opinions one expressed of- by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.